Before you is a list of every single formula that you will need in the trigonometry class. In this video, we're going to prove every single one of them starting from the basic right angled triangle. Suppose this triangle has base A, height B, hypotenuse C, and angle X. By considering the side opposite the angle X and the hypotenuse, we can define the sine of X to be opposite over hypotenuse. Likewise, considering the side adjacent to the angle X and the hypotenuse, we can define the cosine of X to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, considering the sides opposite and adjacent to the angle, we can define the tangent of X to be opposite over adjacent. These already help us establish that the cosine of 90 degrees minus X is the ratio of the side adjacent to the complement angle divided by the hypotenuse, which just so happens to be the sine of X. Likewise, the sine of the complement angle is equal to the side opposite the complement angle, A, divided by the hypotenuse, C, which simplifies to the cosine of X. Finally, we can take sine of X divided by cosine of X to obtain B over C divided by A over C. Doing a bit of algebra, the C's would cancel out giving us B over A, but this just simplifies to the tangent of X. Consider the expression sine of X all squared plus cosine of X all squared. Using the definitions, we can write this as B over C all squared plus A over C all squared. We obtain b squared plus a squared all over c squared. But by the Pythagorean theorem, b squared plus a squared precisely equals c squared. But c squared divided by itself gives us 1. This is the first and arguably the most important Pythagorean trigonometric identity. Using this identity, we can divide out by cosine squared on both sides of the equation. Since sine of x over cosine of x gives us tangent of x, the first expression simplifies to the square of the tangent of x. On the right hand side, the secant of x is defined to be 1 over the cosine of x. We could have instead divided by sine of x all squared, giving us 1 plus the square of the cotangent of x, equaling the square of the cosecant of x, where the cotangent of x is defined to be 1 over the tangent of x, and the cosecant of x is defined to be 1 over the sine of x. But how do we extend trigonometry to non-right-angled triangles? Let's first consider the area of the triangle ABC. This does in fact equal to half times base times height. But what is the base and what is the height? We will let H denote the height of the triangle and simplify the expression. We can notice that the sine of C being opposite over hypotenuse actually equals to H over B. This simplifies algebraically to B times sine of C equaling H which is the area of a triangle using a trigonometry. If we considered the area of this triangle but instead used the sides B and C, the area formula would equal half BC sine of A. If instead we use the sides C and A, the area formula equals half CA sine B. This allows us to divide by half ABC on all sides, leaving us with the sine rule, also known as the law of sines. Since there is a law of sines, we would think that there should be a law of cosines. Consider the triangle once again with height h, and now let's split up the side a into two lengths r and s. Consider the quantity h squared. Since it is the height in a right triangle, by the Pythagorean theorem, h squared equals c squared minus r squared. On the other hand, it is the height of yet another right angled triangle. Express c squared in terms of the other expressions and write r equals to a minus s. Let's perform a little bit of algebra and we notice that the cosine of c being adjacent over hypotenuse equals s over b. This means that b times cosine of c equals to s which means we can substitute to obtain a squared plus b squared 
minus 2ab cosine of c. This is known as the cosine rule, also known as the law of cosines. Furthermore, let's now include the angles x and y. By considering the expression r plus s all squared, we can use the cosine rule on the sides b and c, as well as the angle x plus y. We can write 2bc cosine of x plus y in terms of everything else, and simplify with a little bit of algebra. By the Pythagorean theorem, c squared minus r squared and b squared minus s squared equals h squared. We can now cancel away some excess terms and write cosine of x plus y as h over c times h over b minus r over c times s over b. These are nothing more than trigonometric expressions of x and y respectively and simplifies to cosine of x cosine of y minus sine of x times sine of y. We can derive an analogous formula for sine of x plus y. The area of the entire triangle BAC equals the area of the triangle BAH plus the area of the triangle CAH. Using the area of the triangle formula, the left-hand side is half BC times sine of x plus y, while the area of triangle BAH is half times C times H times sine of x, and the area of CAH is half times B times H times the sine of y. Isolating sine of x plus y and cancelling some terms, we obtain sine of x times H over B plus h over c times the sine of y. But using the basic trick formulae, these simplify to cosine of y and cosine of x respectively. In the special case that y equals to x, we can obtain the double angle formulae, which simplifies to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. For the cosine case, we obtain cosine of 2x equaling cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Applying the Pythagorean identity, we can replace sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x, and this simplifies to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. If instead we replaced cosine squared of x with 1 minus sine squared x, we obtain 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x. The sine addition formulae even helps us factorize sines and apply the sine addition formulae on each of these terms. Simplify the algebra and we obtain the factor formulae for sine. The same technique works with the sum of cosines and is left as an exercise. Finally, if instead we have to deal with a times sine of x plus b times cosine of x, we can write this as a single sine term shifted by alpha and scaled by r. We can expand using the sine addition formulae to obtain a equaling r times cosine of alpha and b equaling r times sine of alpha. This means that when we add a squared to b squared, we obtain r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared. And by the Pythagorean identity, this equals 1, which tells us that r must equal the square root of a squared plus b squared. And finally, taking b divided by a, we obtain r times sine of alpha divided by r times cosine of alpha. The r's cancel out to get sine of alpha over cosine of alpha, and this gives us tangent of alpha as required. A similar formula can be derived in terms of cosine instead of sine. If you're doing an algebra class and need to prove every single exponential identity that you see on the screen right now, click on the video on the screen here.